Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over how to track the distance travelled in game by the player or an AI if you wanted that as well. So I'm going to be using a thread already on the Unreal forums and I'll leave a link to that in the description down below if you want to go check it out as well. But this I'm going to be making a video format of it and also adding something and just changing it ever so slightly as well to get it perfect for me and how I want and just bringing it more up to date with the current engine version as this was five or six years ago now. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to get. So as you can see in the top left we have distance travelled in metres and as I walk around this is going to go up accordingly to what we want and I'm also going to show you how to change it from metres to kilometres or centimetres or anything along those lines so you can track this how you want as well. But as you can see we've currently run 70 odd metres and it's going up as we move around and as we stop it's going to stop going up as well. So without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first step we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint, which for me is the third person character in content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. And once we're in here, we want to find some empty space and right click and add a custom event. And I'm going to name this one add distance. Then what we want to do after this is create a new variable. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here, naming this one location. And as it's location, we want this to be a vector variable here compiling that and we're going to get that there so get location like so and out of this we're going to get a vector minus a vector and we're going to subtract this from the get actor location or we're going to subtract the get actor location from this sorry and so this is how we're going to figure out the difference between the character's current location and where they just were so the location is where they just were and the get actor location is obviously where they are now and so to find the distance between these two we need to subtract them and then get a vector length. So the same way we normally calculate speed, we're also doing that to get the distance in float between these two variables. And so this now is going to be the distance traveled. But we want to add this onto the current distance traveled. So we're going to get the return value of this, get a float plus a float. With the bottom value of this, we're going to right click, promote to variable, naming this distance traveled. And so again, this is how we are now easily calculating the current distance traveled by the player and we're going to be adding it up each time so it actually advances upon what they previously had. And so now we need to make this so it loops again so we need to set this location variable. So very simply we can just drag out and set location there connecting that to the add distance custom event and the location is going to be get actor location like so. So again it's going to be the current location before we then subtract that from their location later on. But I also just missed out one step sorry so before this, we also want to set this to be the distance traveled. So we've calculated that as the distance traveled. Now we need to make sure that the code also knows that. So we can simply just drag on and set distance traveled there, connecting that into the add distance, and then set distance traveled into the set location there. Again, working perfectly like so. So now it's going to calculate what we want it to do. And after this, we can hold down D and left click to get a delay, connecting that to there with the duration as one second or however quick you want it to add up. So this delay here is how frequently it's going to loop and add up the distance. So if you want to do every one second, do that. If you want to do every half second, put it as 0.5 and obviously change this to be what you want. So it could be every second, every minute, every millisecond, whatever you choose, just put the duration in there for what you want. But even if you want to do it constantly, you do still have to have a delay so it's not an infinite loop. So if you want it to just be constant, just put something very low, for example, 0.001. And now that we've completed that, we're going to call event add distance. So it is now looping this event here. And so again, I'll run you through this. It's going to get the player's last location and subtract the player's current location from that to then work out the distance between those two, adding that onto the distance traveled to get the current distance traveled, and then set that location again. And a second later, or however long you set it as, it will calculate the difference between this location and the current location because obviously the player will have moved by then and if they haven't it will just be the current location minus current location which will obviously be zero so it won't add anything up and so to set this off what we need to do is obviously call this event and also set this location to be the player's current location to start with so very simply we can hold down p and left click to get event begin play or if you've already used it hold down s left click to get a sequence with then zero going to the code you have now and then one going to this new code i'm about to make and this new code I'm about to make is going to be setting that location. So we can set location there, 
with the input of this being get actor location. So when we start the game, it's going to be where we want it to be. And after this, we're then going to call function add distance like so. And now this should work perfectly for us. However, what I also want to do is I want to display this in a widget, so I'm going to set that up as well. And also I should mention, if you want to save and load this, that's also very simple. I do have different videos on a save and load system as well. So essentially when you exit the game, you want to save this variable distance here. And when you load up the game, well, you want to load it here off of event begin play. So make sure that you have this as well. But when you begin the game, load the save game and set distance traveled to be what you have in the save game. And when you're about to quit the game, make sure you save the game with this here. But again, I have different videos going over that, which should help you out. So now let's create the widget. So I'm going to compile, minimize, right click, go to use interface and create a widget blueprint. And I'm going to name this one distance traveled widget like so, opening that up straight away. And all I'm going to do in here is just add a very simple text block like so, leaving it in the top left. I don't really need to do much else with this. Don't need to make it fancy. I just want a text block in here. I'm also going to hit size to content and then next to text, I'm going to hit bind and create binding because I obviously want to bind this text to be the distance traveled. So I'm going to move the return node out and go to the event graph so I can get a reference to our character, making it a bit more efficient. I'm going to delete event tick and event pre-construct and instead go off of event construct. Out of this, I'm going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character, with the object obviously being get player character. And then out of this, so as third person character, I'm going to right click, promote to variable, naming this character reference, or for me, car ref, like so. And again, I'm doing this here instead of in the binding, because it just makes it a bit more efficient. So we're only casting once, not every single time. Because we can now access this variable here to access everything within this cast and blueprint here. So I'm going to go back to the binding, get the character reference there, and out of the character reference, I'm going to simply get distance traveled, the variable float we made earlier, and we want to input that as the return value there. So you could just get a two text there, and that'll work. However, I want to format it a bit. So I'm going to come out the return value and get a format text, like so. And inside of this, I'm going to write distance traveled colon space open bracket then write distance and put a close bracket and the brackets are the kind of the ones which have the kind of bump in them i'll put it on screen now what i mean because i can't remember what they're called but i'm going to do that and that just allows us to actually input a value in there which you can see has now come up under here and what i'm also going to do is after this put an m so space m for meters and to get it into meters i'm going to come out of distance traveled and get a float divided by a float, dividing it by 100, and I'm going to put the distance into there, there, like so. So now it's going to format the text to read distance traveled, whatever it is, meters. And that should work perfectly for us. So we can compile and save that. And I believe by default, what it's doing is the actual distance traveled is in centimeters, I believe. So centimeters divided by 100 is giving us the meters. So we're going from centimeters to meters by divided by 100, and obviously centimeters to kilometers, you divide by 1,000, and so on and so forth to get it perfect for what you want. And again, it's in centimeters by default because that is what the unreal units are. So one unreal unit is one centimeter. I'm going to go back to my character blueprint, and on event begin play again, what I'm going to do is simply get a create widget with the class being that distance traveled widget we just made, and the return value of add to viewport, so we're now adding it to the screen so we can see it. And I'm going to compile, save, and hit play to test this out. And you can see up on the top left, it says distance traveled 0.01 meters. And if I move, it's going to update to now be 7.311 meters. So we can now just move about with this updating the current distance traveled between each movement. And again, you can decrease this delay here to get it to update quicker. So I have it at 0 0.001. It's going to be constantly updating and that obviously looks a little bit smoother like so you can get this to be however you want and obviously this is going to be more accurate because it's doing it every millisecond instead of every second or every half second so i think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do we've set it up so we can now track the distance traveled by the player or an ai or anything along those lines so it's just going to get the distance between our current location and a reference location we just previously made and update that to be in centimeters by default which we can change to be in meters kilometers anything that we like 
So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.